Hey there guys, welcome back to another video. So today we'll be taking a look at the Vermi Mix 2, a budget smartphone and the link to the phone is in the description so you can get the most up to date price on it. Alright, so let's jump right in. So here we have the packaging, a very simple box and inside rests the phone. It's very heavy, but it feels nice on the hand. Both the back and the front have glass, so you will have to be careful with it so you don't end up shattering it on both ends. Moving on, inside the box you also get a European power brick, so this won't work for me, but luckily I have a couple of Qualcomm quick chargers laying around, so I should be set with getting the fastest charging speed on this phone possible. The charger outputs 12 volts at 1.5 amps and 9 volts at 2 amps, so it's just Qualcomm quick charge 2.0. It comes with a micro USB cable to charge the phone. You also get two screen protector films, one is for the screen and the other for the glass back. I failed miserably when I tried to put the one for the back, so I didn't bother with the front. It also includes a silicon clear case to keep your phone protected, which has some extra thickness on the corners. This is great because there are no cases for this phone that I can find online. The phone's build quality looks great and feels solid overall, but the back gets easily scratched so I would recommend keeping the case on. I got some scratches and don't even know from what. There are subtle chamfers around the side of the phone where the frame of the phone meets the front and rear glass. The phone is featuring a 6 inch 2160 by 1080 PLCD display, so you have a 18 to 9 aspect ratio, giving you a taller screen than many flagships are going with, like Samsung, LG, and Google for example. The screen looks great and its viewing angles are also good. The screen is bright enough to see outdoors, but at night I find it a bit too bright even with the night mode turned on and the screen lower all the way, but downloading a screen dimmer app will help with that. The side bezels and top bezels are thin, but the bottom chin is huge. The design resembles the Xiaomi Mix 2, and the funny thing is that when I logged into this phone, Google recognized the device as being the Xiaomi Mix 2, and Snapchat did that too. The phone is a bit thick measuring at 7.6mm, which is a bit thick in today's smartphones. The OnePlus 5 in comparison is 7.25mm thick, but this thickness is not an issue for me. It's a good thing because they are able to put in a bigger battery in there. I can hold the phone and use it with one hand quite well, and I can reach the fingerprint scanner easily, which is well placed. But if you have smaller hands, you will struggle. The fingerprint scanner is fast at recognizing your finger, so you can tap it quickly, but the screen takes about a second to turn on, as you can see here. The vibration motor is subtle and feels almost faint to the touch, but keeping the volume on key press gives a better experience. The Verni has a bottom mono firing speaker. The speaker grill on the left here is just for looks. You can cover it up and nothing happens. Right in the center is the micro USB port for charging the phone. On the right side sits the power button close to the volume rocker, so I often turn off the screen when I try to lower the volume. On the top here is the endangered headphone jack, and going over to the left side of the phone, it has the SIM tray. It supports two SIMs, which both are nano SIMs, and you also get expandable storage up to 128GB. Jumping right into the phone now, the phone is running Android 7.0 Nougat, and I don't know if I'll ever get the Android Oreo update, I'll just have to wait and see. The phone has 4GB of RAM and 64GB of storage that's expandable, coupled with a massive 42,000 non-removable battery. It has the stock Android interface. There are not many features on this phone. There is no double tap to wake or off-screen gestures. You can take screenshots by swiping three fingers up or down on a display. You can also swap the back and recent buttons. It came with the back button on the right side just like Samsung's phone have it, but I switched mine because I am more used to having the back button on the left side. You can also double press the power button to launch the camera. And when you're on the home screen and you double press the power button, you can assign it to launch Snapchat if you want. You can also change the size of the font and you can also set a power on and off schedule that it will perform automatically. You also get a flip to mute when there's an incoming call. So that's just about all the features that you get on this phone. It's running their Verni launcher and keyboard, but I got rid of all of that and downloaded the action launcher and the Gboard app and that's what you're seeing here. Moving on to the performance, I know a lot of you like to see the benchmark test, so here's a quick look at it. It scored 783 on the single core and 3056 on the multi core. The phone handled all the games that I played on it, which weren't much. Gaming was smooth, I only encountered a bit of a hiccup when I was getting surrounded by a ton of zombies. It was very quick and minor. The phone only got a bit warm after playing for 30 minutes on it, all the games I played fit the screen entirely, which looked very nice. I am really liking this aspect ratio when gaming, especially in first person shooter games because my hands don't cover up most of the screen like they would on the traditional 16 to 9 aspect ratio, so it's just a little bit better. You will get some black bars when watching most of the YouTube videos out there and movies on this display. Some of the shows will take up most of the screen though like on Netflix, so if you have a Netflix account you can enjoy Stranger Things on this phone for example, so it's nice to view on. 
The battery life on this phone is good, but it's subjective on your own personal usage. I was not able to get my T-Mobile SIM to work on this phone. I tried changing the VPN, but it didn't work. And after leaving my SIM card inside for 2 hours, I eventually got some signal. I got e-internet, which couldn't load the Google homepage, so I wasn't able to use data. I was able to place a call on it, but midway the signal just completely dropped and I didn't have any more signal. With that being said, I couldn't test the battery life while having data on all the time. So I used the phone on Wi-Fi all the time at school and at home, and I used my OnePlus 5 to take calls and send texts. Most of my communication is done through Messenger and Snapchat, so on data, so I was able to use the Bernie a lot. So I ended up getting about 4 hours of on-screen time while gaming and watching videos. On a lighter day, I got around 4 hours and 40 minutes of on-screen time. That's with Bluetooth turned on, GPS, and Wi-Fi all day. And I just keep them on for convenience. So yeah, that's just my usage right there. So charging takes about 2 hours and 15 minutes. And when quick charging, it doesn't tell you that it's quick charging on the display at all. It's just charging. So just something little to note there. Alright, we're getting to the end of the video, so let's go ahead and take a look at the camera. On the back here, it has a dual camera setup. The main one is a 13 megapixel shooter with an f2.0 aperture, and the other is a 5 megapixel one. The 5 megapixel camera is not a telephoto lens, so when you click on the 2 times zoom, it will do digital zoom. The front camera has an 8 megapixel sensor and it's positioned at the bottom here which gives you a weird angle when you're taking selfies. But you can flip the phone upside down and take a picture and it will automatically rotate it. The main camera is a decent camera. The shutter speed is somewhat slow if you're trying to take pictures quickly. More often than not, you will get some blurry pictures. If you hold the camera still for a second, then you will find that the picture quality is good. The quality is a bit flat, but that's nothing some quick editing can fix. And you also get a couple of filters to choose from, and I like this blackboard one, which I took a few pictures with, and I think it looks cool. It also has face beauty, which gives your photos a pinkish reddish glow to it. Then there is the blur effect, which doesn't give you the bokeh effect. It blurs around a circle, as you can see on the picture here. Uh, when I put my finger on the secondary camera, it senses that it's being blocked, so that camera is working. It also has a monochromatic option, so you can take some nice black and white pictures. It also has a panorama and pro option for some manual control. You also get other controls like self timer and face detection. The video quality is also good, it can shoot 1080p. There's a lot of noise in low light, but during the day the videos turn out good. For under $200, I think this is a good phone and it makes a great budget option. So if you have any questions and comments, feel free to drop them down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible and I'll talk to you guys on the next one.